Call to the booth. It is officially Super Bowl week, but first we got to talk about these new head coaches. Paul, drop that beat. last opportunity to pick up some chips when it comes to the NFL. Super Bowl is on the way in LA. Aki will be here at some point. Let's also go! Ce also My celebrating his... Excited. <laughs> As you should be. Also celebrating your birthday. So this is a big, this is a big week. Yeah, it's a big week for me, man. You know what I'm saying? I also think I'm a, for the first time, like for the first time, I think I'm a, I think I'm gonna do some Floyd Mayweather shit, Harrison. I think I'm gonna like... <laughs> I think I'm a bet bet, you know what I'm saying? I think I'm a bet bet. It's gonna make me feel like I'm playing. It's gonna have me really cheering, you know what I'm saying? So I think I'm a bet bet. I think I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a go all out for this Super Bowl. It's on my birthday, I'm gonna have luck on my side and all that good stuff, man. So I, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Hey, hey, more, more power, more power to you. Uh, the yes, game sir. should be, the game should be entertaining. Oh, by the way, this is called to the booth with the key to leave. I'm Harrison Sanford. It's on the Blue Wire Podcast Network. Just <laughs> in case you didn't know, uh, the game should be entertaining uh, on Sunday. What was not entertaining, Akib, was the Pro Bowl last Sunday. Uh, I've never been a big fan of watching the Pro Bowl. I'm a fan of watching great players, but football is a different type of sport when it comes to right. intensity. Uh, how the hell do we fix the Super Bowl? Let I mean, me sorry, you, the Pro Bowl. <laughs> the, the, the Pro Bowl. Let, well, let me ask you this: Are are you a fan of of the baseball All Star Game? Are you a fan yes. of their game? Yes. Basketball. I'm not actually a fan of the All Star Game. I'm a fan of All Star Weekend. That's my I'm point. A, hockey, contest. Hockey? I, I mean, I I don't watch hockey. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 so I sorry, I, I gotta I, jump I in there. We are not a hockey show. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I just wanted it. You know, I'm just, I'm just making a point here, Paul. But check this out. I know. Check this out. I watch basketball, right? Them guys not playing hard. They score on the regular. They score 100 to maybe 110. You know what I'm saying a high scoring team average 115 points tonight. In the All Star game, they score 170, 170 to 180. So if you doubling your points, so y'all just playing offense. Y'all not playing no defense. Baseball, man, we see all kind of playing around in baseball. It's fun. Hockey, same difference, man. So I don't see how people want the football players to come play their ass off, play hard as they can. And we got the most physical sport. Like, it's just for fun. It's, it's a, it is an all-star weekend. Guys is not going to go hurt themselves, man. I mean, the, in the MLB, NBA, NHL, they all schedule their all-stars smack in the middle of the season right because it's it, and they did that for a reason the nfl schedule there's at the end of the season once everything is over with once nothing on the line no more and they did that for a reason because every monday that i played a, a football game every monday it was players in the training room i don't care if it was a a, a calf strain a sprained wrist a sprained ankle Guys going to get hurt playing real football. Man, we're not trying to get hurt at no all-star game, so I don't get it, Harrison, man. The game was just fine to me. If I was a fan and I went there and I seen Diggs and I seen Mahomes and I seen Kyler Murray and I, and I seen all that and got autographs, I'd be happy, bro. I'm not expecting them guys to come out and knock each other heads off and, and get personal foul, 15-yard flags, and I'm just not expecting that. First of all, we don't even get paid enough for that game to play hard in that game. You know what I'm saying? So... It's, it's an all-star game, man. All-star for football, it's like flag two-hand touch. We on tackle. So, I mean, I get it. Y'all got it. Hey, hey, man. It's it's the veteran, the older guys like Shannon, Prime. They saying stuff about it. But, man, hey, we can't do it, man. It's a, it, it, it ain't no point of getting hurt in no game like that. It's entertainment. Hey, they wasn't making as much money as the guys are now. Ain't trying to get hurt in no all-star game. That's Come for on sure. Now. It don't make no <laughs> I guess sense. They don't make no sense. I think it's probably in, uh, incumbent upon uh, the broadcast partners then to, to, to make it a more uh, enjoyable experience. Part of the allure of watching football is the big hits and you're just, you're not going to get them. And that's fair. I don't expect to see them, nah. but maybe there's something else that could be done to make sure that it stays at a level uh, that makes, continues to make it entertaining. I think it was the lowest rated pro bowl in 16 years. I mean, but that's the uh, game itself though. But I mean, you look at the weekend, bro. They got the, the race, they got the dodgeball, they got the, yeah. the catch competition. 
it's entertaining. I actually watched it the Pro Bowl weekend this weekend. My kids watched it. I mean, my kids were super entertained over there, man. So I don't know, man. Put some flags on them then. Y'all want them to y'all want them to speed up the tempo. Put some flags on them then. Hey, you gonna do that? You know what I'm saying? Make it a flag football game. Then it's not football. What the linemen gonna do, right? So hey man, just enjoy it, man. Let us get a break. You know what I'm saying? Let us get a break after after 17 weeks, 18 weeks of banging. Them guys deserve a nice all-star week. And then people say, what's the point of the all-star? What's the point of the Pro Bowl then? It's so you can show love to your all-stars. I'm showing love to our all-stars. We're going to put on a little weekend for you guys. Man, it's 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 fun. It's entertaining. And I, I don't think they should do nothing with it. Keep it the exact same, man. I did enjoy all the other events that went around, like the 40-yard the dash and things of that nature. Good times all around. Could be some tweaks. Hopefully we see them. Uh, but bigger fish to fry like the Super Bowl, and maybe even a bigger fish to fry when it comes to the NFL is solving the issue when it comes to minority head coaches. We have seen how Brian Flores Flores has now uh, filed a lawsuit against the NFL. You and I at originally were skeptical. How can this man prove that there's racism in the NFL when it comes to the hiring process? We all might suspect it, but how actually do you prove it? We've all seen now the Bill Belichick text. We've all heard the accusations about Stephen Ross, the Miami Dolphins owner. Uh, Akeem, just give me, first first and foremost, before we look at it in the grand scope, as a former player and when you talk to other players, did you ever feel that you had a realistic shot or did your counterparts ever feel that they had a realistic shot at being a head coach as opposed to just a defensive or offensive coordinator? Well... I say, yeah, I say, yeah. Like we talk about it, Vaughn always saying he gonna be somebody GM and he gonna hire me to be be the head coach, right? You know what I'm saying? But I say, yeah, and I say, yeah, just because I had two black coaches already, you know what I'm saying? So out of my seven head coaches, or let me see, three, six, seven, eight, out of my eight head coaches, two of them was black. So 25% of my head coaches was black, you know what I'm saying? So. I've seen Raheem Morris go from DB coach to defensive coordinator for two months in the offseason, January and February, then be named the head coach. And I feel like they named him the head coach because they seen him. They got to watch him around the building. They seen what type of leader he was. They seen how smart he was hands on. They seen, you know what I'm saying? They seen he was an alpha of that building already. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like if a player get in and, and he's a defensive coordinator, and they kind of see him as the alpha of that building, they might keep him in house, man. Some organizations will. And of course, there's some organizations who just like, no matter what, they not not gonna hire no black coaches, man. So I don't know. I feel like, I feel like it's opportunity out there, man. It's clear as day, it's a problem. It, but it's a problem in everything, man. It's a problem in politics. We just had one black president, you know what I'm saying? So it's clear as day, it's a problem. It ain't no secret, it's a problem, but I'm lead, man. So I feel like I, I, if I got in there, I'd give me a head coach job. They're going to love lead. There you go. Uh, so, how, so how do you feel about the, the Rooney rule, which I think is now under uh, scrutiny? It's maybe it shouldn't be because now uh, candidates are put in a position where they're doing, quote, unquote, sham interviews. Uh, Rooney rule, a good thing or a bad thing or needs to be or and, and or needs to be scrapped? Uh. I mean, it's it's just a rule that say you got to interview a black coach. I mean, so I mean, I, I, what's the point of it? I don't really see the point of it. What's what is? What we just got to do our due diligence. You know what I'm saying? Just make sure we bring one in. If I, I think it should be scrapped, man. If you want to interview a black coach, interview him. If you don't, then you shouldn't have to, man. So I don't know. It's 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 the world we live in, Harrison. It's the world we live in, man. It, it, everything got a got a little bit of racism in it, if you ask me. Yeah, it's a very difficult thing to do, because, again, if you're you're the owner of the team, you should feel entitled to hire who you want to hire. But at the same right. time, uh, there are there might be an owner, uh, a group of owners, a large segment of owners who are just inclined to not hire a black individual. It's definitely a possibility, just considering the world that we live in. And because definitely. of those factors, uh, maybe they'll never give a black candidate an interview. And if you never give a black candidate an interview, maybe that candidate uh, doesn't stand a chance in the open market. So it's a very difficult thing to to work with. I am thankful that I am not Roger Goodell or anybody like that. Right. Try to solve this situation. Uh, Roger we have Goodell seen... ain't going to solve it. I mean, that's the last person who's going to solve it. He ain't. He he is an extension of the owners. You know what I'm saying? He, he is the spokesman for the NFL. So he definitely won't be the guy who solves it. So he, 
scratch that name. If we're looking for a solution, it's definitely not going to start there. I promise you that. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a challenging situation. I I, I just hope that it continues to be uh, addressed. And the one thing I don't hope to see, or I hope to see, is that black candidates do not feel discouraged in applying. And I feel like that is where it is right now. Where maybe if you're a defensive coordinator, damn, if you're an offensive coordinator like Eric Bieniemy, at this yeah. point you have to feel discouraged. Yeah, I, I, I that's the one. That always got me scratching my head, man. For the last three years, I've been scratching my head, like how this guy don't have a job. And then I see some of the other guys they hiring, man. It's it's just a joke, you know what I'm saying? So, hey, man, it's it's. I always wanted to be a lawyer, you know what I'm saying? If I want to play football, I probably would be a lawyer, because I argue both sides. And at the same time, the NFL is the owners, and it's their business. It's their money. They can hire who the hell they want to hire. I, I'm in my business right now at A+. Plus. If I want to hire all black employees, don't tell me nothing. I worked hard for this money. And if I want to hire all black employees, I could do that. You know what I'm saying? It's, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect nobody to say nothing to me because it's my shit. That's how them owners feel. This they shit. They can hire who they want to hire. So, hey, man, it's the world we live in, man. It's, it's The population is different, man. You know what I'm saying? Have some kids, Harrison. Every, every black person. Need to have a 20 kids. We got to catch up population wise, and then we can start working on these problems that we got in the world. Eventually, as generations keep on going, the racial dynamics get better in the country. But obviously, we are not there just as of yet. Going through uh, the coaching hires that we've seen this offseason, they're all filled up. Everybody's gone now. Matt Eberflus to the Bears. Uh, Nathaniel Hackett, who we've talked about, to the Broncos. Brian Dayball to the New York Giants. Josh McDaniels to the Las Vegas Raiders. Kevin O'Connell to the Minnesota Vikings. Doug Peterson to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mike McDaniel to the Miami Dolphins. And Lovey Smith going to the Texans. Saints pick up or promote Dennis Allen out of those hires, Akib, which one was the best one of them all on the surface, at least. Okay. So I'm going to say in my opinion, Oh, this, this lightweight tough. I really got two. Can I start with the worst? <laughs> I, I didn't know we were going to rank them. Since we, we still on there. this, since we still on this topic, you know what I'm yep. saying? See, we, we talk about this topic and we got to hire a black coach. But they, the Texans hired Lovey Smith. He was, he was they DC. Am I right or am I wrong? Yeah, he was. Was they D anything worth good or anything? Nothing to write home about. So what did he do right to get that job? Like I love Lovey Smith. Nothing against Lovey, but come on, man. That's that. It's other black. If y'all just want to hire a black coach, there's other guys like Eric the Enemy out there who actually on top of their game right now who you could have hired. You know what I'm saying? So we hired one black coach and I, I honestly think it was the worst one out of all of them. You know what I'm saying? Had to get that off my chest real quick, but best hire. I'm going to go with Josh McDaniels. I just like what the Raiders did. I think the weapons that they got over there, veteran quarterback, offensive minded coach. I think he can get over there and, and, and get that offense going in a, in the right direction, a direction, a steady, consistent offense, something that they, you know what I'm saying? They got a real offense that they run now. You know what I'm saying? They got a real plan that they trying to, trying to achieve. So I think Josh and Josh a good leader too, man. I, I, I like him as a person. So I think he going to mess real good with Carr and uh, they probably be the most successful out of, out of all these teams who got the, got new head coaches, man. But Nathaniel Hackett, if, if if the rest of his package come, then that's definitely the best hire. So this is like kind of like a question mark. You know what I'm saying? I, I will say hack it if the rest of his package come. But if he ain't able to land the rest of that package, then the Broncos spent their wheels with hack. It, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I kind of like Josh. I love Josh McDaniels. I think I love hack it. But we got to see what the rest of that package do. But I don't know. I yeah. ain't really vouch for the Lovey Smith, man. I thought the Texans could have did better. Uh, that package would include, uh, presumably, uh, Aaron Rodgers. And going back to uh, the Eric Bieniemy thing, I, I wonder if he's almost a victim of his success or circumstance. He has yeah. a generational quarterback in Patrick Mahomes, working with one of the best offensive minds in the history of the NFL, Andy Reid. He has a lightning quick, once in a lifetime type of wide receiver in Tyreek Hill, yeah. one of the best tight ends of all time. It would seem as if in Travis Kelsey, it's almost as if he was in a, put in a system that's uh, 
built to succeed. And I wonder if uh, owners are skeptical of his talent by himself. And you know That's what else? You know what else about the enemy though, Harrison? He always busy when they interview him for head coaches too. He always in the AFC chip. And sometimes them coaches, they just can't wait. I can't wait. We got good candidates out here. I really can't wait to interview him. That might be hurting him too, man. He always, he always busy in late January. You know what I'm saying? I can't really, can't really give y'all a great interview. I'm trying to win a Super Bowl, man. So that might be, that might be hurting his, hurting his, hurting his, uh, his job. Candidacy. What is, yeah, candidacy. That might be hurting his job, candidacy as well. Yeah, his his contract is actually up as offensive coordinator. I would assume he's coming back, but who knows? Maybe he takes some time in the media to to show off his personality. Might help him uh, get that right. gig. Who knows what he might need to get that gig? But obviously, it seems as if he should be getting one. Speaking of head coaches, why don't we go to head coach Lee? Before we get to okay. our bets, we got we got to know the game plan for the Super Bowl in SoFi Stadium. So if you want to take the game plan for the Rams or the Bengals first, whichever one you'd please, but please give us three sticking points for the Super Bowl participating participating teams. Okay, I'm going to go to Bengals first. I'm going to go to Bengals first, all right? So I say the Rams, the Rams are at their best when they toting the rock, man. They, when they run the ball, they're going to be at their best. So if I'm, the, if I'm the Bengals, I'm trying to discourage them from running the ball. I'm going to invite the pass, right? I'm going to invite Sean McVay to say, oh, y'all want to play like this? I'm going to throw Stafford in the gun and make him throw the ball around. I, I want them to do that, right? So I'm loading the box. First of all, first thing, hit number one, load the box, man. Load the box, discourage the run, encourage the pass. Number two, for, for the uh, Bengals, if they want to win this game, your RBs out the backfield, man. You got to get mixing. And uh, and uh, P. Ryan, the ball out the backfield, got to get it to him quick. You got to expect the Rams to blitz. You know Rod love to blitz. You got to expect it to be pressure. Your old line gave up pressure the whole playoffs. They got pressure the whole playoffs. You got to expect that. Had them running backs ready. Y'all going to be a big part of it. I'm talking seven targets apiece, man. Y'all boys going to have a bunch of targets. Be ready to catch the ball and go. And uh, And number three for the Bengals. We need Joe Vic, baby. We need Joe to use them legs. You're going to have to use them legs. They're going to be coming off the edge. You know, AD, AD get wild sometimes and just rush the quarterback. So he create lanes sometimes himself. He's not going to stand there in two gap and nah in the middle. He's going to rush in that middle. So when, when you got D tackles who rush up the middle, it create lanes a little bit. Joe Vic, we need Joe Vic, baby. You, he got all the nicknames. He cool Joe, Joe Shiesty. Sunday, the Bengals going to need Joe Vic. You know what I'm saying? Use them legs. And I think if they do them three things, man, they got a good chance to win that game. Now we'll go to the Rams. This one, I do want to, I do want to, but I do want to butt in there uh, real oh, yeah, quick. Go ahead. Uh, I saw an interview with Adam Jones, Pac-Man Jones, as some would call him. He My actually, dog, call, he actually called out uh, the passing, the, the running backs out of the backfield. He said that it's something that is Von Miller's weakness because he likes to rush as much as he does. And so that the Bengals should be targeting uh, P. Ryan and mixing P. Ryan out of the backfield. So uh, you guys are on the same accord there uh, as you it pertains like. to. Great minds thinking like Pac Man, that's my dog. All right, let's get All to right, the What Rams. you got for the Rams? Yeah, yeah. Here we go. First things first. They The, the Bengals think the Rams are going to come out. They think Chase is going to get Jalen, right? Mm -mm. I come out, I send Jalen over there to Higgins. I'm going to send Jalen to the number two guy. This ain't my man situation. This ain't my man situation. All man downs for me. Third and short, maybe, you know, second and short. Just, you know, all man downs. Downs I play man on. Jalen, you go to Higgins. Darius, you go to Jamar. And my free safety, you lean all the way to Jamar. So I need y'all basically playing two man on Jamar. Y'all going to double the heck out Jamar. My safety, you'll be kind of on the hash. So you'll still be able to help in the middle of the field a little bit, but... Guys got to know, seam routes away from that safety going to be open. And Jalen, you dolo, baby. Earn, your, earn that 20. We need you to earn it. I'm going to let him strap up Higgins. That's the first thing I do. Put Jalen on Higgins in my man situations, double chase. That'll, that'll, that'll make it difficult for, for Burrow. Burrow, look over there. I see a guy playing underneath. I don't really want to throw that to Chase. I can't really throw it to him deep. My number two guy got Ramsey on him, so I... Now you got to go, boy, you got to go number three guy. So that's who's going to beat me in the Super Bowl, your number three guy. So first thing for the Rams, Jalen on Higgins in my, in my passing situation. 
Number two, Raheem Morris, keep doing what you're doing, baby. Just blitz. Three deep, three fire zone is what we call it. Three deep, three under. Bring five, create them one-on-ones. Man, he's been a master at it. You getting Aaron Donald, Von Miller there now. So now you can get Aaron Donald one-on-ones off the edge and whatever you want. So just keep bringing five, keep creating them one-on-ones. Turn it up a little bit because they offensive line struggle. So I'll blitz even a little bit more than I did in the, in the past three playoff games. Jalen on Higgins, number two blitz. And the third thing the Rams got to do to win this game, 30 is the magic number. And it's just funny, right? Ty Gurley was number 30, and 30 is the magic number. But the 30, I'm talking about Arizona Cardinals, 34 totes. The Who they had next? Who they had next? Uh, the Buccaneers, 30 totes. San Francisco NFC chip, 30 totes, man. So the 30 totes, that's the magic number, man. You get up to 30 runs for the game, and you're going to win it. See, in the NFC Championship game, they got down 10 points, right? Middle of the third quarter, you down 10 points. In the past or early in the season, McVay would have came out throwing. He would have came out gunning. In this game, he came out, ran it. He came out, ran it again. And he stayed with that run. He got up to 30 totes that game. And you was down 10 points, and you still got up to 30 totes, man. So he stayed with that run. They came back and won that game. 30 is the magic number, man. 30 totes. I think the Rams got a great chance to win this game. When you when you put 30 on there in the in the rundown, I thought you were referring to Jesse Bates or something along those lines. But you, <laughs> but you were referring to uh rushing attempts. You've been on that all Number year. Of the, Rams, the Rams need to rush the ball. You've been on that for a good old minute. Uh when it comes to Jalen Ramsey and playing potential shadow coverage on Jamar Chase or Ty, uh, T. Higgins, he has been in the media saying that he wants to smoke with Jamar Chase. That is what he's paid to do, guard the best receivers. We will see if that is just cap for the media, cap for the Bengals and their uh, game planning department, or if that is actually the real deal. That will play a lot of a factor in the player props that we're going to put down some money on in the next second. It definitely will. See, I'll mix it up, though. See, when I'm, when I'm in my zone, when I'm in my regular zones and stuff, I, I send Jalen to chase side. You know what I'm saying? If he in the slot, I let Jalen play the nickel in those zones. You know what I'm saying? So I, I send Jalen to him in my zone. It's clear as day when we playing man. Y'all know we playing man. It's third and four. Y'all know we're going to come out and play man. We've been doing it all year. On those situations, clear man downs, then I send him away. So now that we have the game plan from Akeeb, we might as well do our prop bets or prop picks real quick uh we'll do this as fast as we can to keep cooper cup 175 107.5 receiving yards over under over cooper about to go crazy i'm going with the over two uh jamar chase 80 and a half receiving yards over under mm. uh, or stay I'm go, or stay I'm, away <laughs> i'm gonna go i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm I'm pick on all of them i'm gonna go under man i think i think Raheem Moore is going to focus on taking on taking Chase away, and he got the guys to do it. They might focus on taking Cup away, but how that offense is ran, it's going to be so hard to do. And if y'all play man, you don't got the guy to do it. The Rams got the guy who could contain Chase to 75, 77, right up under that 80. Joe Mixon, 62 and a half rushing yards. Under. Total game sacks, five and a half. Stafford to get sacked one, he'll get sacked twice. Over, over. Stafford gets sacked twice. The Rams gonna go crazy. They're gonna have four days up. Yeah, I love I love that total game sacks when that minus 114. I'm going with the over there too. Uh Paul has a fifth 500 to one Super Bowl odd uh MVP champ uh MVP of the game, Logan Wilson. Ooh, I'm gonna 500 to one. Yeah, I kind of like that. I kind of like. Not going to put too many chips down, but I kind of like Tyler Boyd to be uh, the Super Bowl MVP because he might be the forgotten wide receiver and he's the most experienced wide receiver in that Bengals trio. I guess it could also be Joe Burrow, but there's no fun in that because it's not as much uh, reward for doing that. Akeem, who is your MVP pick or if you want to just go with an outside choice for it? Yeah, I got to go with the outside choice. I ain't, can't go with the regular. But uh, what's the odds, Paul, if you could look at it? What's the odds on uh, Cam Akers? A RB, it's time for RB to get it again. You know, RBs come every Hold what on. they come every every five years. The RB winning. 
could be Akers. Obviously, Sony Michelle is going to play an impact on that as well as a key. I mean, as Paul finds out those uh, finds out yeah. those odds. Real quick, uh, Akib, your final game pick. Bengals plus four and a half versus the Rams. 48 and a half is the over under. I'll say mine first and you close the show with your pick. I am going with the Bengals with the points. I think the Rams will win. I think the Rams will win the game if I'm doing money line, but I am taking the points with the Bengals and I am going with the over. You're going with I'm, not ha- I'm not. I'm not convinced about the over. I'm not convinced, but I am. I feel pretty confident about the Bengals getting four and a half. Hey, well, we on. We on. We on total opposite sides of the fence because I'm going under. I don't think they're getting a 48, man. What's 48? Let me see. 27, 21. Yeah. 48 ain't ain't. Nah, I'm still gonna say under. I like a nice defensive game, man. I'm gonna say under. And I'm going to ride with the home team, man. Last last time a, a, a team played a home game in the Super Bowl, it, it, it wasn't even close, right? They they ain't have to deal with the travel. You know what I'm saying? The travel is is huge. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, if you look at the record of teams going east coast to west coast or west coast to east coast, man, I'm telling you, that's you lose games getting on that plane. They don't got to travel. They stand at home. They practice at the same spot. I'm going Rams minus four, man. I'm taking the Rams to cover. A nice, fast, physical game at home. And Joe Burrow lost them three state championships in high school, man. That's what I keep looking at. So I, 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 I got I to gotta put the bag on the Rams. I'm riding with them. Let's get it, Rod. Let's get it. Von AD, baby, let's go. Let's go, Sean, man. Cooper Cup. This bag down, baby. We finna pick up. I ain't mad at it. Okay, uh, Paul, what are those odds for Cam Akers? 30 to 1. 30 to one. I'll take it. I, I'll ride with Cam Makers for the, for the MVP. Aaron Donald's probably like, what's it? What's AD's? He is, I want to say like 50. No, it was wow. 50? no, he's 16 to one. Vaughn is 40 to one. Ooh. And Vaughn won it before, obviously. Hey, and Vaughn going to go crazy. I'm telling y'all, I talked to my dog this morning. He going to go crazy, man. So, I had to put in the Vaughn and the Cam Akers on the 30 to one and the 40 to one couple bands on each, a band on each one of them. And, and I'll be good. Should be a fun game. Indeed. Thank you guys for tuning in to call to the booth. Make sure you Cooper pick up some Cup. money. And if you win some money, make sure you thank us. Uh, we'll see you next week. And when we re- will recap what happened uh, in the Super Bowl, and then maybe we'll discuss what the hell uh, Kyler Murray is doing unfollowing the Cardinals on social <laughs> media. We all saw that. I'm about to call them. See you. <laughs> Enjoy the games this weekend. Uh, the game this weekend, guys. See you next time.